Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about these two RTX 4080 graphics cards from ASUS, the ROG Strix OC, which is their flagship model, as well as their more affordable Tough Gaming OC. Now I've already talked about the 4080 chip itself in my previous video, so in this one I just want to focus on how these two cards perform and how do they compare to the Founders Edition from Nvidia, as well as to each other when it comes to thermals, noise, power, all different features and so on. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12 volt high power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there and as a nice bonus you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Even though the RTX 4080 is a much lower power chip, Nvidia as well as most of their partners decided to use the same oversized cooling solutions from their RTX 4090s. So the ROG Strix 4080 looks exactly like the 4090 version and it has the same 36 cm long and 15 cm wide design. So it definitely looks massive and impressive, but it won't fit in every case on the market and you should check the specs of your case to make sure it will fit. It is built extremely well and it weighs about 2.4 kilos uh, thanks to its massive heatsink and the vapor chamber and that is almost 300 grams more than the Founders Edition and it is about half a kilo heavier than the Tough Card as well. It has a typical three fan layout with the flow through design on the end so you do want to make sure there is some free space and some airflow on the top side of this card. I still think they took a bit of a risk design wise with a very noticeable red and blue detail on the front and while picking a design is a very subjective thing and some people will like it more than others the fact is that it will be harder to match it with other hardware or to a certain color scheme you have in mind for your build neutral colors are always a safer choice in my opinion that being said in a typical case without a vertical mount you won't really see much of the colors just this beautiful backplate that is pretty neutral and the side of the card that adds a bit of rgb for those that appreciate it the tough card on the other hand has a more neutral gray color scheme with a small rgb detail that is much less noticeable it has a lovely metal shroud and a proper metal backplate and while it's quite a bit lighter than the rog strix card it isn't that much smaller it is only a centimeter shorter it is just as wide and it is even two millimeters thicker so in terms of compatibility they are not all that different. In terms of external features, both cards seem pretty similar as well. They both come with a dual BIOS feature that gives you a two performance profiles to choose from, and both cards come with three DisplayPort connections and two HDMI 2.1 ports. Now the Founders Edition and most other third-party cards will offer only one HDMI connection, so this might be important to some of you. Both cards also use the new 16 pin 12 volt high power connector and include an adapter to use three 8 pin connectors from your power supply instead. Now the main external difference are the two extra fan headers on the ROG card that allow you to connect two case fans that can be controlled directly by the GPU. But internally, the ROG and the tough cards are quite different. At their core they use the same RTX 4080 chip and the same 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, but the ROG card has a more extensive and a more expensive power delivery using more phases and higher rated MOSFETs. So technically the ROG card is the better built and more high-end one. Now it is pretty hard to say how much of a difference that will make in terms of reliability over a long period of time, but it does mean that the ROG can can increase the power limit more comfortably uh, from the 320 watts on the tough card to 360 watts on the ROG Strix card. 
Now, before I dive into the performance of these cards, let's do a quick recap of the 4080 chip itself and how it compares to the previous generation of cards as well as the 4090. Now, compared to the RTX 3080, the 4080 is a significant upgrade, beating it by 31% at 1080p and about 42% at 1440p as well as 4K resolution. That also puts it well ahead of the fastest AMD card at the moment, the RX 6900 XT. Here, the 4080 is about 32% ahead at 1440p and 39% ahead at 4K resolution. And the RTX 4090 is ahead of the RTX 4080 by another 20% on 1440p and 34% on 4K. So especially for these expensive versions of the 4080, like the ROG Strix here, it is important to remember that a lower tier 4090 model will offer you a better gaming performance. Still, the 4080 itself is an impressive chip. It offers good performance for high refresh rate uh, 1440p and 4K monitors, and doing so at closer to 300 watts instead of the 425 to 450 watts on the 4090. But let's see how these ASUS cards compare. The clock speeds are up a little bit compared to the Founders Edition, with the ROG card in the performance BIOS showing the highest boost clocks that are roughly 3% over the FE. Memory clocks, just like on the 4090s, remain unchanged between all three cards. Now, slightly higher boost clocks do lead to slightly higher frame rates in games, but the differences between the three cards are generally very small. For example, in Spider-Man Remaster, there is only a 1-2% to of a difference in average FPS between each of these cards. Uh, God of War shows a slightly larger gap, uh, but interestingly enough, the ROG in its quiet profile is at the top here, but again, and these 3 to 4% differences are something that will be very hard to notice while gaming. Dirt 5 shows a 5% average FPS increase between the slowest FE and the fastest ROG BIOS, but even 5% is barely noticeable. So, generally speaking, game performance differences are just a small little bonus and not really a reason to go for the more expensive card. Now, I think the issue with those small gains becomes larger when we look at the power consumption. So while the differences in performance between the FE, the TUF, and the ROG Strix card are pretty small, in its faster BIOS, the ROG was pulling about 30 to 40 watts more, which doesn't really justify 5% more FPS, in my opinion. More power also leads to more heat that the coolers now need to deal with, but seeing that both of these coolers were made for high power 4090s, none of them have any issues with keeping this 4080 nice and cool. The ROG Strix does show the best performance out of the three, showing somewhat similar core temperatures but better memory temperatures. Uh, the Tough does look a bit worse in comparison, but remember that even the 65 degrees on the Tough in the quiet profile is way below the 90 degree limit of the chip itself. So it is just slightly less overkill than the ROG design. But when we look at the noise levels, we can see a big difference in the cooler designs of these cards. Even with the higher power limit, the ROG is about 2 decibels quieter than the FE. Now, I personally think 40 decibels is actually great for a high-end card, but it is noticeably louder when you compare it to the Whisper Quiet Strix one. Now, the BIOS switch on the Tough card has a larger effect on the noise, uh, with the default performance setting matching the noise levels of the Founders Edition, and the Quiet mode matching the ROG's super low noise mode. If we grab the summary with all this data combined, I do think that the Tufts temperatures on the Quiet profile are going up a bit more than I would like. So for this card, I would say the default performance BIOS feels the most balanced. It is showing similar thermals to the Founders Edition with similar noise levels as well. Now, the ROG Strix card is clearly the superior one, combining the best average thermals with the lowest noise levels, but I do think you should keep this on its quiet bias. I get that they want to make the fastest 4080 and let that power consumption go up in the performance bias, but it just doesn't lead to a significantly better performance, and in the quiet bias, you still get all of the performance, you waste less power, you get slightly better thermals, and you get even lower 
noise levels. While gaming, my i9-13900K rig with this card was pulling around 500 watts from the wall, which means that if you have a good quality 750 watt power supply, you should be more than fine. Until you check the prices of these cards, because this is where it gets pretty complicated. And not just for ASUS, but for any RTX 4080 graphics card that is launching today. Nvidia's MSRP is set to $1,200 in the US or 1,470 euros here in the EU, which is just a lot of money for an 80 card, especially when you consider the fact that the MSRP of the previous generation 3080 was $700. And that's the MSRP. Partner cards like this high-end ROG one will most likely cost a lot more than the MSRP and they might even get too close to the 4090 prices. And keep in mind, 4090 does perform significantly better. So for this ROG Strix card to make sense, the price premium cannot be too high. The tough card, on the other hand, should be at or at least closer to the 4080 MSRP. And seeing how that one looks and how it performs, it is going to be the more sensible card of the two. But keep in mind, this is all in theory because we are still to see what the actual prices and what the actual stock will be in the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months. So if you are in a hurry to buy a new card, I'm not going to blame anyone for grabbing a 4080, especially with the 4090s being almost impossible to find and often extremely overpriced because these 4080s are expensive, but they're still a good product and you will still have plenty of performance to throw around. But if you're not in a hurry to buy a new card, it is probably worth waiting a little bit to see how the next weeks will play out, especially with AMD launching their new GPUs in December that will hopefully nicely compete with this 4080. And that might change this situation a bit because if we look at the current Nvidia prices, some competition is desperately needed. So we'll see. Now that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to click that subscribe button as I have quite a few 4080s to go over in the next few days. Bye guys and see you in the next one.